Alright folks, I've talked many videos about analog, AM, FM, single sideband, and analog is very cool, but unfortunately our modern world uses digital modulation. Now technically it's still analog, but rather than modulating voice directly to either frequency or amplitude, your voice or data is then digitized, converted into binary bits, and then the binary bits have to be represented by some discrete analog waveforms. And one way that we can represent bits to analog signals is something called FSK, or Frequency Shift Keying. And in particular, I like to talk about four FSK, which means we create essentially four different uh, discrete frequency shifts to represent binary data. Quite simple so far. So let's uh, take an example. Let's say uh, the FCC has given us um, 10 kilohertz of bandwidth to make this 4 FSK signal and that's the bandwidth we have, that's what we're allowed to fit it in and we, there's our marching orders from the FCC. Alright, well if you're thinking about it in terms of baseband this would be one approach how you could create essentially four different uh, sine waves that we're going to transmit based on what binary pattern uh, we got to represent. So if we're given 10 kilohertz of bandwidth and we're focusing around DC that's basically minus 5 kilohertz to plus 5 kilohertz is our basically our window. So we might put one signal at minus 3 kilohertz, another guy at minus 1, another binary pattern at 1 kilohertz tone, and the last binary pattern we'll pick at 3 kilohertz tone. Very simple so far. And here's how I'm talking about how we assign these binary patterns to discrete frequency tones. And that's what we mean by frequency shift keying. We're shifting our signal to those different frequency offsets from the carrier. And if we're three, negative 3 kilohertz down, that means a, a zero, 0 was transmitted, right? If we're 1 kilohertz below the carrier, that means a zero, 01 was transmitted. If we're a positive kilohertz above the carrier, that means a 1, 0. And if we're 3 kilohertz above the carrier, that means we're transmitting a 1, 1. So this is how we take digital data and represent it in an actual analog form. I love the uh, these documentaries that show modern communications and they show ones and zeros leaving your phone going up to the cell tower. Folks, that's just nonsense. You have to encode this somehow in some analog form. And here we're encoding it by frequency shift key. But you don't just sit, ones and zeros don't just leave your phone, folks. That, uh, that makes no sense. Anyway, so one thing and they really don't talk about this much, but it's definitely used in application. So when we're doing the different sine waves, we generally want to have an off period between the next symbol. And why would we do that? Well, the reality is this environment is going to be, especially in a wireless channel, there's going to be significant multipath. So if we put this tone right next to here and didn't have this gap, this guy's signal would bleed in a little bit into that next symbol and it would make it difficult for the receiver to decode which tone was sent. So they often put a little space between the symbols and they call that a guard time. So that's what I'm simply showing here that we're going to be transmitting these tones and there'll be a little off time before we go to the next tone to handle if there's any multipath that will fall in here and not mess up the next symbol. Pretty simple stuff, right? There's a whole bunch of math, but I'm obviously not going to do that. All right, well, let's get into an example of how we get text to bits and ultimately bits to tones. 
So let's say we want to transmit the text YouTube. Alright, well we look up our ASCII table and this is the 8-bit binary pattern for capital Y. I'm not going to list all the other ones for you. You can Google that. Come on, this is the 21st century. I'm not going to spell everything out. But anyway, let's get back to... Uh, so there's our Y, right? Here's our Y that we uh, have represented now, the letter Y, capital Y, as a 8-bit pattern, right? And we're going to and we're going to combine every two bits, and so that first zero one, okay, that means we transmitted minus one kilohertz. The next pattern is a zero one again, so we do a negative one kilohertz again, and then we have a one zero, that's a positive one kilohertz, and a zero one again, so we do a negative one. So these are the frequency shifts that we would do to send out the letter Y. All right. Obviously, you'll keep going for the next letter. All right. So I have created a whole uh, MATLAB script for this. The link is below for those that want to try it. But basically, we're going to read in a text file. We're going to convert that text to obviously binary, and then we're going to transmit those binary tones or binary signals, excuse me, as frequency tones. We're going to transmit it. We're going to receive the IQ data with our little RTL dongle, uh, process that WAV file back in MATLAB, and hopefully see our text. So I'm going to quickly switch now to the computer and show you all that running. Again, the MATLAB code and everything is in a link below this video. So go ahead, steal it, download it, anyone in graduate school or engineering school, go ahead and grab it for your next senior design. You're guaranteed to get an A. Very good. Alright, so here is SDR Sharp software and you see the, uh, the FSK uh, signal there and you see the four different tones, right? So this was the whole uh, FSK burst here it is transmitting again. So at the start of this, we have a little chirp that you see here. And then all the binary data are being represented by these four discrete uh, tones that you see popping up randomly. So that's how we're encoding the binary data. And the transmitter for this is an uh, IQ modulator that I have in the other room transmitting at 151 megahertz. So there the burst is done. Now, basically in SDR Sharp, uh, I'm recording the WAV file, which is an IQ file, and we're gonna process that file in MATLAB. Okay, here's the MATLAB file. So you run this uh, receive uh, file to process receive IQ data that we got from the SDR Sharp program. And you simply click Run. A pop-up will ask you to select where the WAV file is. You open it, and you'll see the text. It's that simple. And here's the text message. Testing one, two, three. Is this thing working? Get me some beer. Get me some wine. Get me some pizza. Testing one, two, three. Simple tones to text. And now you understand how our modern world transmits digital data in the 21st century. All right, so this plot in MATLAB shows one of the first symbols. So each symbol is uh, 5 12 samples long. And I was here is the off time down here. I was talking about the guard time. So this plot shows you one of the symbols that represents two bits. So this is just showing you, again, the magnitude. So you don't see the sine wave. But in MATLAB, we're using um, the FFT to find out what sine wave or what tone is present and then convert the tone to bits, convert the bits back to letters. And that's the end of the ballgame.